Thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth, and thank you, Ezra, for uh, doing this this afternoon. Hope all is well with you. Thank you. Good. Um, just uh, wondering, uh, it's always my standard question, uh, what the status is of Jairo and Fadi Navarro and also um, Jordan Shakiri for this weekend? Okay, so Fadi and uh, Jairo, uh, not likely. Um, they still have at least a week, I think. Uh, to go. Shaq is a possibility, but, um, and it's likely, but it's not, uh, it's not a for sure thing as yet. Um, okay. So. I'm sorry, go on. I, I, I jumped the gun there. No, I was just saying that, you know, Fetty and Hyro, uh probably more than likely out this weekend. Shaq is a, a possibility, but uh, I'm not sure yet. But, uh, okay. All right. And then uh, just with Shaq, um, What's the level of concern about what he could provide for the team this season, considering that he had some injuries last year and then has started off this season injured as well? Well, that's the thing, you know, we want, we want to make sure that we get him back uh, as healthy, as close to 100% as possible um, and not risk any further uh, injuries. Um, but, you know, Shaq makes us a better team. You know, when I think we feel like when Shaq is on the pitch, we are a better team. So we want to get him back on the pitch, but we want to make sure that it's uh, in the right timing and that, you know, it, it we limit the uh, the chance of him re-injuring himself. Um, those type of injuries are uh, tricky, and we want to just make sure that it's uh, close to 100% as possible before we run him back out there. Okay, and then I'll I'll ask this and I'll move on. Um, uh, is there a concern though about his durability and that you will be able to depend on him to be on the field um, for most of the season? No, not at all. Um, I think if we do the right things, um, you know, he's he's not 22, um, so these things are going to happen. Um, but um, I think that you know he's shown that he could, you know, when um, uh, properly fit, he can really deliver and really make a difference for us. So, and that's that's our concern right now, that we make sure that we get him close to 100% as possible so that uh, he can do, you know, what we all know he's capable of, of doing, what we've all seen him uh, do last year. So um, we've been very, very, very cautious and very, very patient uh, with that. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Alex Calabrese, Men in Red 97. Hey Ezra, I hope you're doing well today. I just wanted to ask about Yurios Kutias arriving today or this week, um, getting into practice. What have been your first impressions of him in Chicago and is he gonna be available for this weekend? Yes, he came in a couple of days ago. Uh, he's trained with us. Um, I'm looking forward to him, uh, seeing him this weekend. He uh, is he available for um, selection um, and more than likely he will be uh, featured uh, this weekend. Um, he's a very good player. Um, he has a, a nose for the goal, um, and he's just a very good, his hold-up play, his movement off the ball, everything that, you know, we saw while scouting him, we've seen in training this week. So um, we're very happy that he's here. It just adds another element of our attack, something that we, you know, we know we need to get better at. Um, so um, we're very, very, very happy that he's, he's here and he's uh, ready to go. He's healthy and ready to go. And just as a follow-up, uh, there's now three senior-level strikers on the roster, uh, Kai and Casper, who have been playing, uh, Kutsias, and then, you know, Misa and Bezerra, who have also been with the team. And you've been linked with a DP striker. With all those strikers on the roster, how would you describe that position in the competition right now for just one spot on the field? Well, as of right now, we, we only have four because uh, no, there's no DP striker um, here right now. Um, Bezerra is injured. So it's just, you know, Kasper, Kai, um, Kutsi, and, um, and uh, Mesa. Uh, but, you know, only one good play at a time. You know, there'd be some games where we feature two forwards. Um, but um, as of now, it's all about competition. It's all about who's playing the best um, in games and in training uh, that, that sees the playing time. Because obviously we can't play all four. So it's, it's what we want. We want competition. Um, we don't think it's too much competition, especially at that position for us um, so the, the, it's very clear to everyone that uh, whoever is in the best form best shape playing the best uh, producing uh, most will be featured um, so that's where we are with that thank you 
Thank you. Next, we will go with Joe Chats from ONTAP Sports. Hi, Ezra. Thanks, E. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm curious, Casper made his 100th MLS start over the weekend. And I'm curious, Ezra, how you've seen or what you've seen out of him that uh, makes it so he has been such a longtime player in this league and the difference between uh, him last year and him being healthy this year. Well, I think this year he's healthier. Um, the, the back injury is gone. You know, he was able to have surgery in the off season. Um, we feel like his hold up play has been better. Um, this year, um, we're still not getting the goals that that we you know we expect from that position uh, from him. So that's something that we have to continue to work on uh, with him, uh, because if he can score, it makes us that much better of a team, that much harder of a team to beat. Um, we have only lost one game so far uh, that uh, in in um, Philly, uh, being a man down. So we're not losing games, but. Um, there, there have been a couple of games at home, especially where we feel like, you know, we we should have won that we've tied, and so and in one of those games we did score three goals. He did score a goal, so that mainly wasn't from lack of scoring. That was just from not uh, concentrating for ninety minutes. Uh, that's just not focusing late in game. Uh, but in the DC game, you know, we, we what we told them this week is, listen, guys, at home, if the if the, as a team we can hold a team. Uh, keep a clean sheet, then we have to, have to somehow, some way, find uh, one goal, all right? Because there were too many times last year, you know, we ended game 0-0, and where just one goal would have changed our playoff um, position and stuff like that. So, you know, Casper, he's much healthier now, um, and, you know, the, the last piece of it now is for us to get him, you know, producing more as far as putting the ball in the back of the net. And... That's something that we're going to continue to work on with not just Casper, with all of our forwards, um, because um, it's it can make a difference between playing in, in late October, early November or not. And um, like I said, these two last two home games, we really, really felt like we've left four points on the board. Um, it just means we have to go on the road now and, and find those four points. So uh, I think the team is sure that we're capable of doing that. So. There's no, no panic or anything, but we do need to produce more as far as in the attack. Thank you. Thank you. We will go next with Adnan Basic from Vavil. Hello, both of you. hope both of you are doing well. There's only been about 8,000 fans in the crowd these last two games at Soldier Field. Has that had any effect on you and the team? No, because, you know, we don't even realize it's just 8,000 people because our fans are very loud. You can hear them clear. Um, they're cheering the whole time. So the fans have been very, very good. Um, so we don't even realize that, you know, there's not 10,000 people in the stands because of the uh, how uh, energetic our crowd is and our, our fan base, our supporters. So we're happy for that. Um, it's been some bad weather in our, all three games. Um, we're hearing that it's supposed to be better this weekend as far as the weather. So um, we expect more fans to come out this weekend. And, but at the end of the day, we have to give them reason to come and to keep coming, you know. Um, win games and they'll come is, is how I see it. But the, the few that have been there, um, we have um, really, really appreciate their, their energy and, and their, their, their cheering for us. Um, speaking about the home games, I know you say there's always pressure to win your home games, but do you feel there's any extra pressure going into these next two since they're both at home? Well, we don't want to put added pressure on ourselves. Um, one of the things that we, we've said to the players from, from day one is that if you take care of your home games, uh, getting into the playoff becomes easier and then it's less uh, of a pressure on you on the road to pick up uh, these points because every time you don't pick up points at home, and mind you, it's not been losses, but it's been, they've felt like losses because we, feel, we felt like, especially in the two, not the NYCFC, we thought, okay, a point was a fair deal because of the way that game went. Um, but definitely since the NDC, we, we felt like we should have got all, all six points. We didn't. We've left four on the, uh, on the board. Um, but we've shown that we, we can go on the road and get the points. But the, 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 the thought about winning home games is that when you do that, one, your path to the uh, playoff becomes much, much easier. And two, you don't have to go on the road fighting for these 
extra points that you drop in at home. Um, and also, what we say to them is, guys, three points in April is just as good as three points in late September, early October. So if we put ourselves in positions, in position to get all three, like we did in the last two home games, why not do it? You know, why not do it? Um, the miss by Kai late in the game, nine out of ten times he's going to score that, and that's three points uh, for us. So um, we're happy, but we're just not satisfied right now with uh, our play at home. Thank you. We'll go two more questions. First, Larry Holly from WGN, and then we'll end with Brian Sandalow. Larry? Hi, Ezra. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to ask you about what you've seen out of Mauricio in the two years, you know, about the year and a half here you've worked with him. What stood out to you about his game, his work ethic, or other things you've just seen either in training or in games? Well, he's, he's you know, he's, he's a homegrown player that really, you know, bleeds fire. Um, you know, starting the last year when Fetty was injured, he was, he was starting. Um, him and Gaston in the middle was a very good uh, combination. Um, Fetty came in and started, and but he never gave up. You know, he kept uh, plugging away. He works hard in training, and he's always going to get onto the pitch. You know, he's someone that uh, he's probably going to play every game, you know, because of the, our situation. So uh, I'm just happy for him that he stayed focused and he didn't get discouraged uh, when he didn't get uh, enough playing time or he didn't get uh, playing time at all. Uh, he just kept working hard, and, and that has kept him, you know, in our, uh, as, as one of our, you know, players that we look at when we say, okay, who do we need on the pitch? What type of players we want on this team? Uh, he's one of those guys. You know, he brings it at training, and when called upon in games, he's been very, very good for us. So we're very happy with him. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brian, last one. Thank you. Um, just uh, wondering uh, if there's uh, about Wyatt Omsberg, uh, obviously coming back from the injury after having a very strong start to the season last year before getting hurt um what's the plan and outlook to get him some playing time and what has the message been to him as he's still uh waiting his turn right now yeah you know Wyatt is another one similar to Mauricio um he came in uh big enough last year when Carlos was injured and played well and even when Carlos came back we kept him on the pitch because he was playing so well but then he had the injury Carlos came in and Carlos was playing well and what we told all of the players coming into preseason this year was, you know, it's going to be an open competition for uh, these positions. Um, we, we're trying to make the team stronger. We, we, we felt like we, we were stronger. And um, we just felt at the start of this season that Carlos was the best fit uh, with Rafa. You know, Carlos brings an element of, you know, his pace and stuff like that that really complements uh, Shields very, very well back there. But uh, I've spoken to Wyatt and I've told him, listen, you, you're going to get games. Um, the month of May is going to be very congested. It's going to be a lot of three and eights, three and seven that we're going to need him. So um, just make sure that he continues to stay sharp. You know, he's he's played in one of the um, the second team games now uh, to help keep that, that 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 fitness, that game form. So he's he's willing to you know step on the pitch whenever called upon and, and do the job. And we're very um, you know we're very optimistic about what he does and what he brings to the team when he does step on the pitch. So he's another one, but, you know, players need games. You know, players need games, and so we will uh, get him on the pitch um, in, a, in a timely manner. Thank you so much, Coach, for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Right. Everyone, thank you for sticking with Thanks, us. Guys. We'll be right back with Mauricio Pineda.